Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Skip Town Playhouse, otherwise known as the My Laughers Comedy Club. But right now, it's the Stick With The Pod Brother Pod Brother. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your host and your MC for the Stick With The Pod Brother Pod Brother, Stephen Kimmel. Give it up for Woo-hoo! me in the house. That's how low budget we are. We, I do my own damn intros. I do my own intro. I have the fortunate pleasure of having uh, as one of uh, uh, my headlining guests today, a friend who I've been working with for the past 20, 25 years yeah, in, the, in the field of stand-up comedy. <laughs> and the softball field. And the softball fields. And uh, this guy is the, he is the comics comic. <laughs> he is the uh, head writer for the Conan O'Brien show. He's banging around the country doing some serious stand-up. And I got a chance to snatch him between the Conan show and he's leaving right here to go to another gig because he's in that much demand. Mr. Brian Kiley, ladies and gentlemen. Give it for Brian Kiley. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I can't, I'm in a loading zone, so I can't, I can't stand it. This does kind of feel like a loading zone. <laughs> yeah, all you need is a doot, 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 doot. Oh, Brian. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. good How are you doing? You. Yeah, good to see you too, man. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I always have one eye on you, and you're always doing some really cool stuff. And, oh, well, thanks. And by the way, thanks for hooking me up with the tickets for the uh, Conan O'Brien show. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. And I did got I a chance. You did, yeah. I did. All right, I'm glad I did. <laughs> He's so busy, he doesn't even know I he know. hooks a brother up. <laughs> well, I remember you, you contacted me at, at uh, Comic-Con, and it was like, those tickets had gone like a year ago. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. And then I felt bad. I was like, "Oh, are you kidding me? I can't get, I can't get me into that." <laughs> well, you know, I know you could if you would, but that it's you definitely hooked me up for the Conan O'Brien. I'm Brian glad. For, I'm glad. For, and who was on when you were there? Um, I don't even remember, man. <laughs> but you it was a really, it was a good show. I was just, you know, I was basically absorbing it all and sure, the, the band sure. and show, you, you know, because I'm looking at it from a different eye than a civilian would be looking at since I'm Absolutely. a comedian and I'm yep. a producer, writer, yep, yep, and yep. I'm kind of just like taking notes and looking at stuff, you know, the the, the act could have been topless, I wouldn't have known. So. Wow, okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was a really cool experience, man. Uh, and the friends that I brought with me were very impressed. Good, good. I'm so glad. it gave me some juice, some kudos, yeah, yeah, yeah. some credibility. I appreciate that. Um, you know, we 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 came up through that whole Boston scene. Yes, yes, we did a, dumb places in New England you wouldn't drive by. Yeah, I'm talking. You, know? you walk into a place and there's a chalk outline of the homicide <laughs> from the night before, <laughs> and you hope it wasn't a comic. <laughs> Um, what was one of your fondest moments in, in Boston? What am, one of my fondest yeah. ones? Um, you know, I, I, I think just working with those fascinating comics. Do you know what I mean? They like, were incredible. They were such characters. It, you just don't meet people like that in life. And there's this one guy, Bob Seibel, who passed away. I remember Bob. He was, he was incredible. He, he, He's like the godfather of Boston comedy. He was, at 60 years old. He would literally run the Boston Marathon and then headline a show that night and do 45 minutes. Like he was this unbelievable force of nature that it was just fascinating to meet people like that, you know? You know, one of my fondest memories of uh, you and I, because Boston was one of those kind of towns where they would send two headliners out. And, and, and only one came back. <laughs> <laughs> because it was that kind of crowd. <laughs> True. Um, and uh, um, Barry Katz booked us on a lot of colleges, and he would yeah. double us up. And yep. then, and sometimes we would be multiple books. So you would you would open this college and then drive and then close the next college yes. and then drive back and do the late night set yep. in Boston. It sure, was, it was kind of like that. And I remember doing a college. Uh, I think it was Keene. Was it Keene College? It was or? Like, I was like, I think it was something like Keene State. But there was some school we did. We were because we did like a tour of like New Hampshire and Maine and whatever. yeah, and Vermont, and Vermont. And and there was, I remember I was doing jokes about the first President Bush was in office. And wait, I was really bashing him. I, I remember. And his <laughs> nephew was in the crowd, remember? This he kid was, was pissed. pissed. <laughs> and every time I do a joke, like the whole crowd were like, over. I'm like, what's going on? And they're all looking over. And I had no idea that the president's nephew. <laughs> what's going on It was like there? his great nephew or his nephew or whatever. I, I think it was his nephew. I think it was his nephew. Yeah. And that kid was pissed. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah. it was really, it was, it was pretty funny. It's hysterical. Yeah. It's like being the only black guy in the audience and when a white comic does a black joke, they all look at me like, <laughs> <laughs> is he laughing? Is that funny? Is that cool? 
<laughs> Are we gonna get shot? <laughs> uh, I remember that uh, 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 Julie Barr worked on that show with us. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was Julie Barr, me, and you. All right. And I think you had another college, so you went on first. Wow. And okay. then um, I started the trouble, then I left. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you yeah. brought on, <laughs> then you brought on me, and then I think Julie closed. Oh, no, I, no, Julie was before close. me. Yeah, I closed. You closed. Yeah. You please. opened Julie, and then I closed. All right. That's what it was, because you had another college to well, head on. Guys, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you get into writing for Conan? Well, I used to. Uh, I, I did a lot of topical jokes in my act. So I would just read the papers every day and write jokes off it. And then somebody's writing for Conan get fired. And they wanted somebody to help out with the monologues. So Tom Agna and Tom Sklar, Tom, yeah. who we yeah. used to work with in yeah. Boston, they were, they were two of the people working on his team. So they had me send in a packet. And they liked the jokes. And they called me. It was Monday. And they said, you start tomorrow. And I was like, OK. So I just took the shuttle down and <laughs> and, and it's, I've been there 24 years. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Give it up. 24 years writing for yeah, Conan. Yeah. That's it's, that's incredible. That's awesome. It's kind of sad when you think about it, but whatever. <laughs> now, you've been, there long, like, you, uh, you've been there long enough to see a turnover of writers, writers oh, come yeah, and sure, go. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like what's you know, what's what's the thing that you that you see that is a pitfall that could send you out the door as a writer for a team of writers on, on the Conan show? Well, yeah, that's a good question because what you have to, like the, what, when the, a person has their show like that, they're the, you know, whether it's Ellen or Conan or whatever, they're the emperor. So you have to kind of make your stuff what they want. We had a very funny guy on the show who would, who would present a bit and Conan would say, yeah, it's funny, let's do it like this. And he'd say, nope, it should be like this. <laughs> it's like, well... I got news for you, pal. It's, it's his show. <laughs> it's his show. His name's on the show. So you have to, even though you have s certain jokes, you go, oh, I thought it was better this way or whatever it is. It's his thing. It's his name on it. So you have to kind of, you have to write for the host and what they like. And so something could be very funny, but it doesn't fit the host. That's, you have to give that up, you know. So yeah. uh, you have to bow down to the. To the emperor, absolutely. To Caesar, Caesar, yes. Caesar is king. That's true for a reason. That's true. And I, before I started there, I, I, I did a lot of sort of wordplay in my act, and I like those kind of jokes. Well, Conan hates those jokes, and he's beaten them out of me. And I just don't write those jokes anymore because <laughs> I learned that that was I was getting I was being hated. So you have to kind of be flexible and and uh, adjust, you know, according to the emperor. Nice. That's a good piece. So all you uh, wannabe writers out there who want to write for a TV show, that's that's one thing you definitely need to well, understand. Well, even sometimes you see that someone writes a spec script where it's like, that that doesn't, this could be funny, but if, if they're writing a script or an existing show, it's got to fit the tone of that show. Right. You know? So it's a sort of the same idea. And when he actually, because I'm sure there's hundreds of jokes that are thrown on the table, and mm -hmm. it's only a six minute monologue, so he's yes. only going to use, yeah, you yeah. know, one or two of them. Mm -hmm. So how how does that make you feel when like he picks your joke? First of all, how many writers are there on the team? Because well, there's three of us. Are working rumor on the has it there's like fifty. You know, if there's six, <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> uh, there's three of us that work on the monologue, and so we're all writing about thirty or forty jokes a day, and then. Of all of of the forty, well, yeah, say of the forty or fifty jokes I'm writing a day, he'll do two of them. So that's a lot of jokes that are just thrown in the pile that aren't used. Well, do they get recycled at some point, or, oh, or once they've yeah. seen? I turn them in the next day, slightly, <laughs> <laughs> slightly changed. Um, so you're in a but, coffee room. You're just, you know, like because you've already re you're recycling the last well, week's jokes. And there's some stories that kind of come around like a year or two later, you know, and you're like. Oh, that one's back in there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah. And, it, and, and the timing of it makes the joke work. It's, well, I it's mean, more relevant or... Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny how sometimes it's like, well, he didn't like this one two years ago, but now he liked it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it must have been ahead of its time, apparently. Um. <laughs> Did he uh, ever use someone's joke and it just ate it and he comes back and been like, your joke ate it. It's like, your joke sucked. Or is it, is there like a score well, well, that, of that, that, what that jokes work? That never happened to me, but I've heard about that happening. <laughs> uh, no, you know, one 20 years of writing, that never <laughs> happened to me, Kimbro, but I've seen some crash and burn. That's why we keep wet blankets on the side of stage for those assholes. Well, he, he came to me one time, the monologue, it was a terrible crowd and whatever. The jokes weren't that good and so on. 
So it didn't go well. So he comes to my <laughs> office the next day and he's like, how do you feel sending me out there with that shit? <laughs> And I said to him, I said, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Rear Window with Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> so Jimmy Stewart's got two broken legs and he's looking out this window and he thinks his neighbor's murdered his wife. So when the neighbor leaves, he sends his girlfriend, Grace Kelly, to go investigate. So while he's watching her investigate, the bad guy, Raymond Burr, comes back and starts manhandling her. And Jimmy Stewart is just watching helplessly while she's being beaten. That's how I feel if the monologue is not going well. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you've been manhandled. Oh, yes. Beat. Like, oh, get out of there, Conan, come on. Oh, uh, okay. I think you're yes. getting a signal for your time because you got to right. do another gig. Right. But before you get out of here, I uh, I launched a, because you know we're sports guys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I actually, we, we, we're very manly. You know, when you come back, we'll go into the sports thing. But before <laughs> you leave, I, um, I launched a game, an online sports game called The Penalty Game. Oh, really? And basically... Uh, um, I'm, I'm, How does I'm, it work? Uh, you watch the game mm -hmm. with your significant other or buddy or friend or yeah. whatever, and uh, you write on your card what you want your friend to do or your wife or girlfriend to do if your team, if her team gets a penalty. Oh, why? If see. your team gets a penalty, she writes what you have to do. So, so is this supposed to be like? Is this like a dirty game? Is that it can game? be? I see. But uh -huh. when you're playing with the grandkids and grandma, you I might want to be G-rated oh, on I see. it. But okay. so it if you're a married anything. couple, twenty years, you might want to spice it up. You could write on there what you want to write on there. Hmm. So, for example, you know, you're Celtics. I'm New York. Yeah. And uh, so I write on mine that that if your team gets a penalty, you draw this card. So what you, if you and I are watching a game together? We're not we're not going to write sexy stuff. What no, we're going to write stuff like the twenty push-ups. Oh, I see. Walk around, cluck like a chicken. Go get me a beer. Go get me a beer. I buy me a pizza. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so before you leave, as okay. as a writer for the Conan O'Brien show, you can <laughs> oh, keep no. that card as a souvenir. Okay. Uh, what three penalties would you write for me to do if we were watching the game, and uh, I draw that card? I would have to do that if my team got a penalty. What would that be? I definitely would want you to get me some type of beer, like a like a imported beer. You okay. Know what I mean? Like yeah. not a, not a domestic beer. But I want you to go to that country. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good thing I got a passport. <laughs> What's another penalty you have? Um, you know what? I could always use someone to vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to get domestic beer. I'm vacuuming your car or your house. or your. And also, I'd like you to write five minutes for me for my act would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> now that I could do. I, I know you. I think I could write into you. Right, absolutely. I'm waiting for you to get your own show so you can hire me as your hey, writer. I've, you know how long I've been waiting for my own show? <laughs> it's going to yeah. happen, man. I, I, I feel <laughs> well, it. And when you do, I'll be the guy writing jokes all right. and vacuuming your bathroom Great on your set. Great to see you, Good to see you. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right. When we play that, I'm going to call you, okay. and then we'll play it for real. Yeah, yeah, I want that beer. Yeah, okay. uh, absolutely. All right, buddy. Great to see you. Brian Kiley, ladies and gentlemen. Give it for Brian Kiley. All right. We're going to take a little bit of break, and then we're going to start the stand-up comedy.